For the next month, this is gonna be my entire food budget. And no, I didn't stock up on groceries before this. In fact, I'm starting out with zero food. No pantry staples, no spices, no condiments. I won't even have access to my little basil plant. Whether or not I'm able to do this depends entirely on my ability to stretch every single dollar I spend at the grocery store. If you're wondering why I'm doing this, we're gonna have to rewind a bit. According to the most recent data, the average cost of food at home has gone up 10%, which is pretty bad, but it gets even worse when you look at standard pantry staples such as flour, butter, and eggs. These prices are just getting crazy. While no official food insecurity data has come out about 2022 yet, experts are projecting that the number will have risen sharply due to the increased commodity costs and the conflict in the Black Sea. Thanks, Putin. On a more personal level, I spend a lot of time on Reddit helping to answer questions from beginners on food and cooking. And it is not uncommon to see people who are trying to stretch their last dollar or make whatever ingredients they have at home work because they can't go to the grocery store until they get their next paycheck. There are already plenty of YouTube videos that feature meals with low per serving costs. And don't get me wrong, those kinds of videos can be helpful, but the dollar calculation on each one of those videos is only counting towards the amount of each ingredient that's being used in that dish. So if they use one tablespoon of soy sauce, they're only factoring in six cents when the cheapest bottle I can find is $1.58. That might not seem like a lot, but when added up, the real life grocery store costs of each one of those ingredients average between three and 500% more than the cost that they're claiming in the video, which can get expensive pretty quick, especially for making very dishes throughout the week. With this project, we'll take a more holistic approach at each dollar we spend at the grocery store, how to make it work for us in different ways and keep things interesting. I mean, I'm not looking to just not starve for the next month, I'm looking to thrive. I wanna spend the next 31 days eating as well as possible, varying my meals, eating fresh and maximizing flavor. I spent the last few days making a rough outline of what I wanna make and the ingredients that I need to get. So the next phase of my research is to hit the grocery store. There are a few ingredients that are going to be key in a lot of meals that I'm making. So I chose nine different things to check and went to five different grocery stores to compare prices. And here's what I came up with. The green items are the best prices I found and the red are the worst. Store two has a couple of X's because it's a big box store that also sells food, but the store closest to me doesn't have fresh produce or meat. But the thing I find most interesting here is store three. As you can see, it either has the best or worst prices for each of the items on the list. This store is advertised as a discount store and their prices on chicken thighs and ground pork, which I will definitely be taking advantage of, is very competitive. But their other items are higher than all the surrounding stores. I feel like this is because meat prices are focused on so much that stores like this keep those prices low so they make you feel like you're getting a deal when you're overpaying for other items. Store 5 I also find interesting because they're branded as like a high-end grocery store, but most of their prices were middling except for ground pork, which was, you know, ridiculous. Now that my research is done, I have some preparation to do. First, I need to make space in my pantry and my refrigerator. I can't just put all this food in storage because I live with my girlfriend and she's not being subjected to this budgetary restriction. So I'm cordoning off one shelf and one drawer in my refrigerator, I'm clearing off my baker's rack, and I'm emptying out one cabinet for my food. The thing I'm gonna miss most, I think, is gonna be my spice collection. I have a pretty broad range of spices that I use in almost everything that I make. I'm always pulling something out of the drawer to add to whatever I'm cooking, and that's just not gonna be available to me. The budget that I have for spices for this month is $4, so I can afford maybe four, probably just three spices, and that's gonna be it. Maximizing flavor is gonna be a challenge this month, and it's gonna be challenging knowing I have all this flavor right here in my drawer and I can't use it. I'm really excited to get this project started. This is a 31 day challenge, so the last week is actually gonna be more like a week and a half, and to leave time for editing and everything, these videos are actually coming out about two weeks after the fact. If you wanna follow along in real time, there are links to my TikTok and Instagram in the profile, and I'm posting to those every day. I hope you're coming along on this journey with me. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.